Leboroski here, and welcome to another Scourge of War walkthrough. This one's going to be a little more elaborate than the last ones I've done. We are going to do what I think is the most fun of all the Gettysburg scenarios, which is called Three Times is Not a Charm, and this is a what-if scenario where you command Jackson's Second Corps and Jackson is not dead. Uh, which means that theoretically uh, we get all the good stuff with Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson. We get uh, basically somebody who is extremely aggressive and this is great terrain for him to work on because it's relatively open and if he could do so well in the woods at Chancellorsville, imagine what he can do in the open here at Gettysburg. So let's get started. I use the Garnier campaign mod. Uh, hopefully it'll come on. I don't remember if it actually works on this scenario because it has a lot better controls. But if it doesn't, we'll use the regular vanilla controls with the game. The Garnier campaign mod controls are excellent and I highly recommend them to anybody who's playing. And if you go to Scourge of War Garnier G-A-R-N-I-E-R -E mod, you'll, you'll be able to use it. Okay, here we are. No, we don't have the Garnier campaign mods. And here we are with Thomas Jackson and his second corps. We are going to skip all of the florid messages he gets from his subordinates. Here we have a division of his corps, and looking at the order of battle, it is I think it's Colston's. Uh, let's see what we have here. It's Early's division. Okay, so we have Early's division, and we are obviously going to have to take this position here because that is the one that has the marker on it. Yeah, here, Early says, I'm coming in. What should I do, General? Well, you're going to take this position. That's what you're going to do, Jubal. All right, so that's the position we need to take. And as soon as I get Early going, uh, we will then take a look at the uh, strategic situation. So I'm going to tell General Early to a line that way and I'm going to tell him to use the roads. So that should spring everybody into action. So let's take a look. We're going to let him do his thing for a while because if you look at it, he's probably going to deploy his artillery up here on this little rise, which is probably the best position because the woods would block, seemingly block any other artillery position. Now let's look at the map. All right, so here is Early's division, and it's come in along the Harrisburg Road. The rest of the Second Corps will probably appear on either the Newville Road, the Mummusburg Road. Um, I don't think it ever comes in over here. Now, on the, on the left of uh, the map, we see basically this is uh, Heath's division which has exhausted itself trying to assault this position. Uh, and uh, there's Lee, and he, you know he's not going to have these guys uh, attack anymore, I would guess. Uh, although he does have Longstreet's uh, core is there, but my experience with playing this scenario is no, he doesn't. He just sits there, unfortunately. Now, we have two preliminary objectives, Blocker's Knoll and Seminary Ridge, and ideally we would be able to control this entire axis here, and then somehow penetrate the Federals and get up to the hill. So, but obviously the first thing we need to do is control this position, mainly because this is a great artillery position, and also because that's where the Federals are. So let's see what's going on. Going on the road as he's been ordered. But what are those guys doing? That's Avery. 
commanding Hope's brigade. Where is he going? In general? All right, fine. Um, I hate to take control of everything and micromanage because it sort of goes against the whole. historical recreation. But, if, uh, if they do dumb things, I'll micromanage that. Now, the first thing I want to have happen is, okay, if you have ordered your guys there, then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a suggestion, which is that instead of deploying there, you deploy there. I'm going to take control of this particular brigade and make sure it does that. Because what's the point of deploying out here when you can deploy right there? I mean, there's lots of woods. They're not going to interfere with you. They're not going to send skirmishers out. Similarly, with... Okay, that makes sense. Hayes is going to deploy there. Hayes going to deploy. So, he deploys an artillery battery with this view of the position? That's absurd. That doesn't seem very logical. Alright, Demont. Uh, I'm going to take control of Demont because he's deploying in a bad place. Let's get down on the ground here and see what we can see. Target infantry use solid shot. And the reason that we don't use all the various kinds of uh, ammunition available is because of the game mechanics. Uh, players have found that in general, the most damage you can uh, <coughs> cause is if you use that setting. So let's go to the next uh, artillery. Setting up carpenters. Is he going up the hill? Demons going there. Brown, where's he going? Right, he's setting up there. Let's take a look on the ground at actually what they would be able to see from there. That's a lousy place too. Okay, fine. We're gonna take control of Brown's artillery. And we're gonna put him pretty much up in the same place because there aren't that many good. Positions available. And we want to put some fire on that hilltop. Artillery is a support function in the Civil War. It is not used to attack positions on its own. It doesn't function that way. Jubal, I am now going to tell you to all out assault. Now that you've deployed. And, uh, Avery, uh, see, he's, he's giving me that. Let's look at where we are So, instead of. Column by divisions is a formation that's halfway between line and column. Column's for marching, line is for fighting. Column by divisions is a hybrid formation that is halfway between it, which is used for maneuvering in the face of the enemy. Here you can see uh, they're in column by division, whereas this unit is in line. What's he doing here? It's like he does, 
not sure exactly the, the AI is not sure exactly what to do so he's put everybody in column and he's sort of waiting for us to assault all right so now let's look at that's a, probably a lousy place yeah let's let's take a look didn't I already tell him to go up there anyway, let's go look at this an impact of a cannon shell on the road. Isn't that cool? Alright. So, before I take uh, a look at the infantry, let's look at the divisional uh, artillery and uh, how it's been positioned and what it can see. So we get right down to ground level. already scored a couple of hits. Brown hasn't. And Rain has already scored some hits. So that's enough. That's doing. All right, now, uh, General, uh, you need to get. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right, let's get down here and check out Hoke's brigade's assault. Now, ideally, what else should be going on here? What's he doing with... Where's Gordon going? Gordon is going to deploy way out there and presumably end up over here, and that's fine. Across the creek, which was our major uh, terrain problem there, and we're enfilading this line. See how these guys are lined up perpendicular to this line here? Let me get down and show you better. Okay, there's the Union line, and here's my line, which are enfilading it. Yeah, you would wonder how they could hit anybody down there, but. In all likelihood, I will uh, suggest that these guys charge out of there after a few moments. Let's see if they can get in there. How are these guys doing? Alright, in a minute or so, we'll stop this video and move on to another segment.
one of the basic ideas when you do this, when you, when you charge a position, is you, you only, uh, you don't only use one regiment to do it. You use as many as you can, and preferably everything you've got. Because it's a risky venture, and you know what they say, in for a penny, in for a pound. So here we go, everybody's at it. Now these guys are meleeing. And we're coming up on what I think is the end of the segment. Let's give it a few more seconds. Thanks a lot for being with me. This is Leboroski signing.